Hi everyone, this is Diane from Orchid Island Soap, and I'd like to show you how I set up my barcode system for my soap shop. The first thing you have to do is get your equipment ready. As you can see, it took four pieces of equipment for me. I used the computer and the Excel file that you can see, and I generated my barcodes and put them in the Excel file, and I'll show you how I did that. And then I used my square point of sale with the square stand and the Dymo label writer 450, which I think is really important. Without that, you're printing labels on you know, a printer and sticking the paper in, and it's, it's just really a pain. You're not gonna be able to print as easily and as efficiently as you would like. That was about $85 from Amazon, the, the Dynamo label writer 450. And then up here, I have my scanner. This is a Honeywell Voyager 1250 scanner that I bought again from Amazon for about $70. So, you know, around $150, that's all I spent to set up my barcode system. The first thing you have to do is set up your SKU numbers. You, you want to make sure all your items have a SKU number. Now the SKU number is the number that a barcode is generated from. So that's the link from your scanner. Your, scan, your scanner scans the barcode and that links into your SKU number in your square POS. And that allows you to check somebody out very quickly. I only use this for checkout reasons because it was taking me forever to punch all the different categories and all the different soaps. It was just somebody, a customer standing there forever and I just kind of felt bad. So now it's a lot easier and a lot more efficient. I don't use it for inventory. I just have the square POS. I don't have the square for retail. So I use it for checkout only. So the first thing you're going to do is generate your SKU numbers. And by generating, I mean, you're going to choose what SKU numbers you're going to pick for your product. Uh, so go into your items and I'm going to select my soap category. So here's my soap category and let's select one of my soaps and you can see right there where it says the price and the SKU number. I chose SP7 what I did for my soap category, all my soaps have the first two letters is SP, and then I just numbered them down, one through, in this case it was about 50, 51. So I can always just add more. I'm not trying to find two letters that go with black amber, and then I might have something else with the same two letters, so I just numbered them one through 51. So it's important for you to generate your SKU numbers using a system that is meaningful to you. You know, like SP stands for soap. Um, other categories that I have are sea sponge. So the sea sponge is SE1. Let's look at one more. Bath bomb is BB1. Okay, that's the only item I have in the bath bomb category. So all of these items make sense. Rather than actually naming it bath bomb one, just keep in mind that you can use more than the three or four characters that I use, but the longer your SKU is, the longer your barcode is going to be. And I wanted it to fit on the side of my soap. so. It kind of depends where you want to place your barcode on your product as to you know how long you want your barcode to be. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually generate the barcodes from these SKU numbers. So we're going to generate our barcodes from the SKU numbers that we've, that we've set up in our square system. I just typed in free online barcode generators and I got quite a few uh, of those generators and I used a few. Some of them gave me a barcode a little bit larger than I wanted so I would have to play with it in the end. 
I was trying to find something that just fit perfectly. Now this is the one I found that I like the best. It's at www.ruggedtabletpc.com. The first thing you need to do when you use a barcode generator is to decide what kind of barcode you want. Now, I use code 39, which has been around for a long time. It's a very standard barcoding system. It's one that you can only use in-house. If you want to wholesale your products, that's a whole different animal. You know, you're going to have to pay for those barcodes, and that's a completely another system. But if you want to just keep this in-house for your own purposes, you have quite a choice of barcodes. But again, I, I chose code 39. It was easy. Uh, it was standard. So uh, we'll go with that. The next thing you need to do is say whether you want to include the text or not. And the text is the SKU number itself. And I wanted my SKU number to be on my barcode that I generated. So I chose yes. The image size is small. Like I said, I wanted it to fit on a side of a bar of soap. So depending upon where you want that, you might choose something else. The image format, I found it didn't make a lot of difference, so I just left it at the default of a ping file. And the barcode value is your SKU number. So where it says barcode value, you're going to type in your SKU number. So let's um, type in SP40 uh, or 50. Okay, there's SP50, and now I'm going to generate the barcode. And if we look up in the right-hand corner, there's your barcode. So once it's generated the barcode, you're going to download it. So I'll hit the download button. And you're going to see it in this file. Right here, it generates it. And you, can, you have the option of saving it, but all I did is I right-clicked on it and copied it. And then I went to my Excel file and I put it in my Excel file wherever I wanted it. So it, I've already generated my barcode, so let's just put this one over here where I've selected the cell. And I'm going to do Control V for paste. And it'll paste the barcode right there. So for all of your barcodes, it's a kind of a tedious process to do it this way, but it is free. You, there are add-ins for Excel that you can get that'll do it a lot more efficiently, but it costs money. So if you want to do it you know, without spending any more extra money, uh, this works fine, and you get where it, it goes pretty quickly. So the next thing we're going to do is print this barcode out. All right, now we have our barcode that I generated. Uh, you would do this for all of your SKU numbers. Generate your barcodes. I put them in Excel, and I have them all there so I can pick whichever SOAP I want to generate a barcode for. Uh, just select it and then print it out. So I'm going to select this, and one thing that I didn't realize is you need to select the whole I think it's four, four rows. If you select just the barcode, you get the picture itself and it doesn't print. So you want to select like you would select a group, of, a group of rows. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to go to print. And let's go through this printing, because this took me a while to get that barcode to show up right here. As you see, you, you want to look at this and make sure it's there exactly the way you want it to look on your label. So over here in your settings, the printer is a Dymo Label Writer 450. The print selection, you're going to print only the current selection. And that way, if you have 50 of that product, you can just print 50 labels, just right like that. And then I did landscape, because if I do portrait, the barcode goes off the page. 
and then I set the margins to zero, zero, left and right, zero, zero. If you put any kind of margin in there, again, it doesn't, it won't print. So depending upon the width of your label, so you, you want to check that if you're having trouble printing. So I will just go ahead and print, and you can see it come out of the label writer. So that's your barcode, and again, if you printed like 50 of them, it would go really quick. And you can you do that for each one of your barcodes, and you can print as many as you need. Okay, I want to back up just a minute and talk about how we're going to connect the, the label writer. We, we printed out our barcodes, but... I forgot to show you how that was connected. It's pretty easy. You just connect one of the one of the cords to the USB cable into your printer, and then the other cord is connected to the outlet. Okay, and the label writer is always connected to your uh, computer. It's it's just a printer. Just think of it as a printer, and we're going to print it onto the label writer rather than just another printer. So once you print out your barcodes, then you've got everything on your products. Your SKU numbers have been generated. Your barcodes have been generated. Everything's on your product. You're ready to have a customer at your checkout stand, and you can use your scanner to check them out. So that's what we're going to do now so you can see what happens with that. So I'm going to take my scanner. And then I'm going to scan, that's one, and you see it registered up there. And then I'm going to check out another one. So I've got two soaps, and I've got the tax, and I can go ahead and check it out. The only difference between using a scanner and using the square stand is that you just, just have to find the soap, I have to scroll down, check the soap that somebody wants. It just took too long. So I wanted to use this to, to speed up the checkout process. So how is this scanner connected? There's only one cord here. The scanner is sitting up there. There's one cord and it is connected to the hub on the um, square stand. So that's why you can't use you can't use the scanner with just the square. You have to you have to have a square stand in order to connect it because you can't connect it to your iPad. So I hope that was helpful. Um, let me know if you have questions. Again, this is Diane from Orchid Island Soap, and I appreciate you watching this. Thanks.